Nobody comes in and goes, oh my goodness, my office is so clean, I'm going to get my janitor a birthday present. It just doesn't happen like that. There's an old African proverb where the lion wakes up every morning and has to outrun the slowest gazelle, and the gazelle wakes up every morning and has to outrun the fastest lion, but everybody wakes up running. Cleaning's not rocket science, I'll be the first to tell you that. It's a sales and customer service business that happens to... Today on the show, I'm happy to have Adam Pavlitz, the CEO of, of Anago Cleaning Systems. They elevate your cleaning experience with tech-driven solutions. So Adam, what's the revenue of the business currently? Hey, Chad, revenue currently is about $125 million. How many employees do you have in the company? Currently 50. And what year was it founded? Founded in 1989, 80s babies. When did you guys actually convert to a franchise model? So we didn't actually start. We have two levels of franchises. We have master franchising and unit franchises. We started unit franchising in 1991. Um, and then the first master franchise wasn't sold until 1999. How many franchisees do you now have? So now as of today, we have 48 master franchises across the U.S. and Canada, and then over 1,800 unit franchises. So what is it like to run an organization with that many franchisees? And what's the technology behind it? Stressful. <laughs> No, no, it, it's, we're obviously very busy and the technology is a huge help for that. So we're in the commercial cleaning franchising space. And so you can imagine when something goes wrong and maybe something didn't get cleaned correctly, it can, if it's not handled 1800 times, the issues can start getting really loud. So we created a bit of software called CleanCom. It's proprietary to us. And what it does is allows for customers, if there's an issue, they have to do it on their phone. It's called our CleanCom app. They take a picture of the issue. They send it in, it's all private communication. You're not trading cell phone numbers. It has built in Google Translate. So if your language or the person cleaning your office's language isn't the same, you're able to communicate. And then we have a built in two hour response guarantee. So you can get back to doing whatever you were doing at your office before you notice the cleaning issue. And so that, that helps. We're at less than half of the cancellations across the industry. Our percentage is less than half of that because of it. So it makes my job a little bit easier. So over time, you guys became a very tech enabled commercial cleaning company. Yep. Yeah. The, if you think about it, obviously everybody's going kind of the technology way. If you're not, you're falling behind for us. We recognized early that compared to my competitors, I'm not going to have a better mop or a better vacuum or something like that. Everybody at this level can get the same equipment. So we invested all our technology in, in the experience, the customer experience, hence that clean comm software I was just talking about, because if you think about it, and I, and I was saying, when I said, well, get back to whatever your business is about, if you com commercial cleaning has different experience levels than say going to a restaurant, right? You go to a restaurant. And you could have one of three experiences. You go and the food is great. The waitress is awesome. You go and it's terrible. The food is cold. The waiter's a jerk. Or you just have one of those middle of the road, eh, whatever experiences. In commercial cleaning, there's only two. Nobody comes in and goes, oh my goodness, my office is so clean. I'm going to get my janitor a birthday present. It just doesn't happen like that. Either you come in and you go, I got to work. And you sit down at your desk and you do your thing. Or you come in and you go, why is my trash can still full? Why is the, my desk still have a bunch of smudges on it? Why is the bathroom dirty? Whatever. And you want it fixed and you want it fixed now so that you don't have to think about it. And so that's where we've made our technological investments is all about the customer service piece of helping those customers getting back to, frankly, forgetting about us. <laughs> what are some of the key things you guys do on the customer experience? I think it's about its ownership, right? And the reality is. Unlike say an Apple or an Amazon, right? Where a lot of the work, a lot of the, a lot of the end result is a product. Ours is a service. So on one hand, it's great because I can't, my franchise can't exactly be exported to China and then people do the work here. But at the same time, because you have that human element, you always run into the fact that humans make mistakes. And so if there's going to be mistakes, we have a big culture here about own your mistakes and about quick speed to resolution on your mistakes. And so that, again, tying back all to the software, it's, a, it's singularly focused on give good service, give cus good customer service. And if you do screw something up, because it's going to happen, fix it and fix it fast. And on the franchise side of things, how are franchisees actually approaching you or how are you, how are you finding them? We actually, years ago, got, got heavy into the social media game 
I mean, it's not exactly a fan page you'd think would be have a lot of fans, but we have over almost 40,000 followers of our Facebook page. And it was something that we made an initiative of years ago and just paying attention to what's going on in social and in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of that sort of stuff. We're probably, we're probably social media geared toward maybe the older population, right? So we're not so deep into TikTok as we are on like a Facebook or Instagram. But it, it's amazing what you can do when you build a community because ultimately nobody's going on Facebook to pick their next cleaning company, but they are going on to learn about empowerment, how to improve their lives, how through, and our avenue to empower them and improve their lives is through small business ownership. So who is the ideal person to be a franchisee and have that small business ownership? So again, we have the two levels of franchisees. At the unit level, I think it's someone, I think at either level, it's someone who's got some drive, some ambition. You have to be, you have to want it. If you're thinking of it like a job, get a job somewhere. It, it, this is probably not the opportunity for you. At the unit level, it's someone who can follow a system, pay it, do focus on follow-up, customer service focus. It's someone who really cares about their customers. At the master franchise level, you need all of that. But then you, then because the master franchise level is, I should probably get into the business model after the, after this question, but the master franchise level is very sales oriented. So it's someone who the, they say there's an old African proverb where the lion wakes up every morning and has to outrun the slowest gazelle and the gazelle wakes up every morning and has to outrun the fastest lion, but everybody wakes up running. And that is, I would say the master franchise life it's go lots of drive, managing a sales team. And so maybe I'll use that as my own segue here. So just to explain our model, because it is a little confusing. It's not typical. When I say franchise, most people think of like a McDonald's or a Subway or something like that. And those are two tier franchises. So you have the corporate office and then you have the, the people who own the restaurants. Our model is a three tier franchise. So we have the corporate office. That's I'm at the corporate office. We have what's called a master franchise. And that's someone who owns like a large territory, right? That's Atlanta, Miami, Philadelphia, wherever. And within that territory, the master franchise is selling unit franchises. So a unit franchise is someone who's looking to open a small business, smaller and much smaller investment in the cleaning, in the commercial cleaning space. But the beauty is we've did our, we did our research on this thing and we said, wait a minute, the statistics on small businesses are, is terrible, right? Like I think it's 50% fail in the first year and then of the remaining 50% or, or it's in the first three years, 50% fail the first three years. And then the remaining of the remaining 50%, another something like 80% fail in the next five years or something like that. It's terrible. And why do you think that is? Our hypothesis is if someone says, Chad, you're a really great cook, you should open a restaurant and maybe you are a great cook and you make some amazing meal. That doesn't mean anything about restaurant management, inventory, spoilage, employee turnover, marketing, recruiting, all that sort of stuff, which is key to being a good cook and owning a restaurant business is all the other aspects. So what we did is we were able to separate the business side from the functional side. And so most commercial cleaning is actually done at night. So your unit franchises who are owning the cleaning businesses, look, cleaning's not rocket science. I'll be the first to tell you that. They, we coach them on best practices and, and get them the best rates on chemicals and equipment, but their core function is running a cleaning business where they're hiring a crew, understanding the chemicals and equipment, keeping the buildings clean. But during the day, who got them those accounts? Who's invoicing those accounts? That would be the master franchise handling the more business side of the business back end, if you will, for the unit franchisee. So the master franchise is a white collar in the blue collar industry. They're doing the sales and marketing. They're the ones with the website. They are the ones with the accounting team, sending out the invoices and, and making collection calls, making sure the bills get paid. And so it creates a really cool synergy where the, the master franchise is doing sort of the day job and the unit franchise is doing sort of the night job and together everyone's saving a lot of money on overhead. I like that model. It makes a lot of sense now that you've, you've created those two tiers so that you really have built a really strong sales team in doing that. Yeah, you, you have to. It's extremely sales focused across the country. We have, there's probably there's over a hundred people in sales at any given moment. And it's crucial to find the right people, keep them hungry, keep them excited. But it is, it's almost, it's a sales and customer service business. 
that happens to just be in commercial cleaning. Yeah, no, it's an interesting way to look at it. Uh, instead of uh, being in the cleaning business, no, you're in the business of building sales teams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if any of our listeners wanted to reach out to learn more about getting involved in either of the tiers, how could they do so? Yeah, you can always check out, obviously, our website. It's anagocleaning.com. That's A-N-A-G-O cleaning.com. And then we're on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that sort of stuff. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. So if someone just wants to look me up and shoot me a message, I'll be sure to respond. Everyone, make sure to check out Anago. And thank you, Adam, for coming on the show and everybody for listening to another episode of Bailing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki. We'll see you next time.